Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, we are going to do a video today looking at an update to the Peppermint banking computer that I built last week. So if you were on that live stream, then uh, first thing you'll remember is that it didn't seem to want to install, and we were wondering, is the USB drive bad, whatever else. Well, I'm not sure exactly what the issue is. I have two hypotheses. Um, as soon as the stream was over, I popped the disk out, put it right back in, install it with the exact same methodology through the virtual machine and it literally was installed in less than five minutes. So hypothesis one is that the USB drive initially was formatted with NTFS, I think, and for whatever reason, it just didn't want to format that correctly. That's a hypothesis um, because in the middle of that, as soon as I finished the stream, the one step I did differently is I pulled it out, I ran it through disks, and reformatted the entire thing in ext4, and then I went ahead and, and installed. The second hypothesis is maybe there's just something wrong with that USB port. So this computer has several different systems. I did pull out the manual to look at what USB ports are on the board, and yes, that port is a 3.0 port. Uh, but I have actually noticed some other times that it doesn't seem to perform as well as it should. So I'm wondering if there might be something wrong with that particular port. I did shift it one port up, which is also USB 3. In fact, that might be a 3.1. And uh, that is what installed it really quick. So anytime that I'm doing something with that type of software, I go ahead and just use that, that better port. And so those are kind of my hypotheses. Now, before we jump into the actual desktop, uh, this is not the exact one I installed. This is set up as a replicate on my virtual machine just for the fact that my real bank accounts are on there. I don't want you guys to know who the bank accounts are. I don't want to accidentally open up the documents, but I'll kind of show you what I did, how I had it set up and talk about some of the differences. So let's go ahead and uh, jump on over there. First thing I'd like to say is thank you to whoever pointed this out in the comments, um, but to get your desktop icons on here, you do not actually have to go to the Deconf editor. Right click, go down to customize on your desktop, and then desktop settings, you can actually toggle your systems on right here. Why this is not something I can find inside the, uh, the menu is beyond me, but it's right here. Uh, Peppermint guys, just put a link to this inside that Peppermint settings. That would be epic. Now, the other uh, problem, since we're discussing problems, um, I will tell you the one issue that I'm having. So if you could tell me a fix for this. Of course, I'm running my system on a two monitor display and it never likes to boot up with the correct monitor settings. And for whatever reason, it takes forever to get lined up. And it's actually a little frustrating. So when you have two monitors set up, you'll have the option to select which one's your primary and whichever else. The issue is, is that the monitor on my right is actually HDMI. The monitor on the left is actually GBA. I don't know. <laughs> GBA, I think. Whatever it is. The old thing. Now, I can't switch the monitors um, because the monitor on the left shares its monitor screen with the Mac, which can't go to the other side. That's why I have to set it up that way. But XFCE, uh, like Cinnamon remembers everything perfectly. XFCE, it gets all confused when you boot the system up. Um, and so for whatever reason, it continuously screws around the displays despite I have everything set to remember and all that other stuff. So that's really the only major problem I'm having. Now, that being said, uh, this is set up just like the other one with the exception that uh, my panels and fonts are much smaller on the other one because I don't really care for big fonts. I just did it so you guys can see a little bit better. Now, some of the system tweaks that I did in the system is I made it so that inactive windows are not transparent. I actually found that since I'm constantly bouncing back and forth between different accounts, different windows, different things, having transparent windows all over the place is actually distracting. And so I went into the settings and you can find that inside of the Peppermint, I think it's the Peppermint settings panel, um, go into the Peppermint Control Center desktop effects and I just changed the center one. I think the default is 83. And with your default at 83, you'll kind of see that stuff is half transparent. That's actually a little frustrating. So I just pulled these all the way up to 100. As far as dragging windows opacity, that's cool. I don't mind that. 
Uh, so that's really the first tweak that I did. Of course, I went through, and you can still see this Dropbox is in here. Um, I wish that would go away. Um, Dropbox is a company I will not do any business with. Um, and really the only Dropbox application is a Nemo Dropbox integration. So I removed that from the system. I just searched for Dropbox and Synaptic Package Manager and remove that system. I also removed all of the old existing ICE applications and I replaced it only with the banks. So of course, um, I don't do, well, I have a PayPal account. Um, I don't do business with Bank of America or Chase. I just added those to simulate what I have. So of course I have some investment accounts, some bank accounts, um, a few other things, uh, you know, uh, cell phone accounts, stuff like that. So those are all dropped on and I actually have all of those attached to my panel down here so I can actually boot these guys up and they kind of uh, launch out. They don't launch out full screen. This kind of launch out much like this. So I can come into here and boot these guys all up and click right on in. Just come right on up and hit the sign in buttons on each of my bank accounts and sign into the various accounts. And so each one of these, uh, each one of these guys here will uh, give me a completely separate, completely isolated. Now, something else that some people had commented on in the video, so let's go ahead and look at that. When I was creating the ICE applications, I did not actually have this checked. Um, SSBs in Firefox are always isolated, so it actually didn't matter if I did or not, but for practice, particularly if you're using Chrome, Chromium, or Vivaldi, you definitely want to make sure that this button here is checked. Otherwise, it's going to share a user profile, and that's going to help the different banks track track you across the their various competitors and you don't really want them to have that information so make sure that you are selecting uh, this box particularly if you're not using Firefox some people have commented why is this here if we're fixing Firefox eh, probably to save several hundred lines of code um, but with that being said, uh, the other tweaks that I did is I installed two software suites. I sh probably should have removed some as well, but I installed GNU Cache, which is what I use for my business uh, books, and I installed LibreOffice. Really, I probably only needed LibreCalc, um, although I might start experimenting with some databasing stuff uh, attached to one of my businesses. So it'd be good to have that whole suite on there. So of course I have GNU Cache down here on the panel. I don't have LibreOffice. And the reason I don't have LibreOffice is I just open up the various Office documents. So some people asked about what do I prefer, K, uh, KeePass X or K, KeePass KC. I really actually don't use KeePass. Um, I actually use password protected spreadsheets. Of course, QuidSub just did a video about how easy it is to crack these. Um, but again, these are, these are documents that are very well hidden. This is on a USB drive that is encrypted and then it is further password protected on top of this. Um, so if you do not know how to password protect a LibreOffice document, the process is you want to save the document or save as the document. So let's go past two and then you want to come down here to the very bottom and you want to hit save with password. Make sure that this is um, selected. You can also encrypt it with a GPG key if you want. Uh, hit this and then enter your password. I'm just going to use Peppermint for the sake of this video. Of course, you want to have a better option. You also have the ability to set a read-only password as well. So somebody could open the document and read it, but not actually edit the document. All right. So here now we have a password protected document. Here's the other password protected document. So to open this guy up again, we're going to need to enter the password. So I do that. Um, is this the best option? Probably not. It would be safe to use a password manager. It's just that I've had this system in place for a long, long time. They are not scattered across computers that are easy to access. And that for me is sufficient probably should use a password manager, but this is definitely a, a decent option. Of course, the password manager is going to be a lot better at preventing memory leaks. This here is not necessarily a secure option, but this system is only on for a very short period of time. It has a very specific purpose and that's it. Now, I do my, um, I do my accounting in, in spreadsheets, of course, Linux does have a few options. If you just type in finance, uh, if I can spell finance, 
in the software manager, you'll find K My Money, you'll find Grisby, you'll find Scrooge, uh, GNU Cash is in there. So there's a variety of different personal financial manager tools you can use. I have been developing my spreadsheets for quite a while. In fact, I have a video about my spreadsheet. I think I have a blank copy of the spreadsheet that you can download if you want to use it. It's a very, um, it's a very robust system. It tracks all of my goals with a lot of nice bells and whistles that I've been developing over the years. That's why I really haven't switched for one, but I do, as I said, use GNU Cash for my businesses. Now, I'm actually thinking about doing a video series about how to set up GNU Cash to set it up so that you can um, send, uh, send your books out to your accountant to get your taxes done. Um, of course, I use QuickBooks on my one business and I use GNU Cash on the other and uh, everything is moving towards GNU Cash. I'm just trying to get a few final things set up. So this is what I'm using. Of course, what's your difference between something like K My Money and Grisby and GNU Cash? Well, GNU Cash is set up specifically to track finances in a business versus the other ones are a personal finance. There's a really big difference between those. And so that is kind of what's going on there. Now this layout is otherwise, other than the size layout of the menus and the buttons is pretty much identical. All my different buttons are down here. Um, I have my file manager over here. Of course, um, about every other week or so, I do an encrypted archive of everything critical on the file, which is my um, my GNU cache file, my financial files, and if there's any changes to the password files, those get dumped onto an archive and put on a, in a uh, central backup server, and then those ones get, get their way to the bank vault when I get out to, to there. So as far as how the system works, it works beautifully. This is working so much better than Lubuntu did. Of course, the uh, the reality is the Lubuntu build was extremely old. Um, that was almost two years old by now. It was it was getting old. It was it was uh, you know it needed updating. Peppermint though gives me the the modern look, the feel, and it is it is amazingly snappy. So very happy with with the system. Uh, did see one more thing I didn't talk about. I did run the advert blocker, so of course I am running all of these guys. This will just add these different systems to the host file. I've already run it, so they're already in there, so I don't need to put them in again. Um, but that is my final setup. Everything's working great. Have a look at the the description. We'll have the uh, video for how I actually do my personal finances. And stay tuned. Uh, let me guys uh, know if you want to see a more advanced tutorials on GNU Cash, getting that set up for a business. So why is Peppermint a better option than Lubuntu? Ultimately, I think uh, first it has, first it, just the, the personal things to me, the very subjective things. I really like the theming of Peppermint. Uh, you either love it or you hate it. Uh, some people don't like the style, the weird colors and things like that. I actually think it's kind of cool. I like it. Um, that's a very subjective reason. As far as what makes it a little bit better uh, for security and stuff is that it has the ICE applications built in. Sure, you can install these on any system that you want really, but the fact they're already installed out of the box, everything is set up, everything's working just fine. It just, for me, makes it a perfect system. It also has some elements of uh, of Mint, Linux Mint, that I really like about it. It has a feel that's like cinnamon, but it's also super lightweight. So it's running, uh, right now it's running on 536 megabytes after having a bunch of stuff. So GNU cache is running still. Let's close that one. So that drops it down. So I'm running on only about half a gig of memory and it runs extremely well. I have the software I need. I have the capabilities that I need. If I do want to switch to using the, the um, uh, password manager, I can easily install it on this as I can on Lubuntu. I just think that this is a much more modern feel. It's a much snappier feel. And they have those extra features as the ICE applications to isolate all my banking systems into other things. So that is my update on the banking system. Uh, let me know what you think. Um, why am I doing this? Well, it actually keeps all of my banking and all of the passwords associated with banking completely isolated from every other computer, and that's only a good thing. It gives me a nice thumb drive I can plug into nearly any other computer in the system, and it works out great. And ultimately, this setup allows me to get all of that stuff done in a very fast, very secure environment. And with that, it's 
it just has the entire process streamlined. So thanks for watching this one. Let me know your thoughts, your comments, and your questions in the comments down below.